I'm Geoffroy. I'm really happy to be here in Pittsburgh. It's my first time in Pittsburgh. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a project that's been going on in my life for quite some time now, and who's the, the reason I initially came to Rust. So I'm pretty, pretty excited to talk to, to you about that. So, first of you thing, I work at Clever Cloud, which is a French platform as a service hosting company. Um, so, just kind of like Heroku and others, you git push your code, it runs. Uh, we've, we've been doing some Rust a lot this past few months. Uh, we have actually a lot of code in production that's using Rust. We have replaced big parts of the, uh, our infrastructure. And I'm really happy to announce that now you can deploy Rust application on our platform. So it's just basically a cargo run on the cloud. Push on as many instances you want. It's in virtual machines. It works with stable, and I tested it this morning. It was really, really cool to use. So I'm really, really excited about that because like, it takes some time to support new platform, and like Rust was so easy to get there. It's, a, it's amazing. So let's talk about this little project that I really like, yeah. in which I worked for, for a few years. So Videolan makes VLC media player, uh, which is a media player. And the, the idea of VLC is basically you drag and drop any file, and it will work. It should work with like almost any format, HTTP, FTP, uh, as input or a file, uh, MP4, uh, MKV, in every, any codec, anything, it should work. So it's a pretty big goal, but it kind of works. But the, there's an issue with that when you try to handle uh, like as many formats, formats as existing, as, sorry, as are existing, that you got vulnerabilities. Like so, those are a few ones we got like in the past few years. Uh, the MP4 demuxer, the MP4 parser is really interesting because like it's not does not look like com very complex as a format, but like it's very, very ambiguous, very hard to get right because there are lots of competing implementations. So VLC is made in C. It's like hundreds, thousands of lines of C everywhere, and all of this, all of the passing code is written in C. So we get manual passes where people just try to interpret the specification, do pointer arithmetic by hand. We have formats that are very, very ambiguous, very complex to get right. And so uh, at some point, I thought maybe there's a better solution for writing parsers in VLC and make the whole application safer. So that went, that's when I went looking for something like, you see where I'm going? I wanted something that's memory safe, in which you can write correct, uh, correct code easily and that you can embed in C, because otherwise, I'd like, uh, I tried to propose Haskell at some point, and they said it was not a good idea to have a garbage collected language in uh, media replication. It could have been cool, really. Uh, and that can work uh, in a string. Like, you got data coming and coming and coming, and you have to pass that very, very fast, because it, you should not like, block the rest of the decoding. So, already have one thing. We have memory safe stuff. Uh, can we get like good parsers with Rust? Well, yes, but uh, I don't know if you've been going to the uh, Fudzing workshop yesterday, but like even if you use Rust, you will get crashes in parser when you write manual parsers because it's still hard to get right. So that's why I started to work on this little project called NOM <laughs> with the idea that it should be easy to write a good parser, and it should be a fun process. So NUM basically is two things. It's, it's the, the, the approach to parsing called the parser combinators. The idea is that you have a lot of small functions, very, very small, very testable, like you can unit test any part of your parser, and you combine them in larger parser, in larger recognizer, and then you get like the whole, the whole format. And to do that, like, there are different approaches to parsing in Rust, and long story short, when I started, Rust was very, very young, and macros were a very, very good solution for that, and I think they are still. But you will, you will, you will see how weird it can get. So, basically, Rust, uh, num, those are just functions, one that take an input type, an output type, and a error type, 
And when you get input into a function, it will get either incomplete to say, okay, I need more data, which is very useful when you're doing streaming, like maybe you need to fill up the buffer a bit more, uh, an error. And done contains the remaining input, what has not been consumed, and the output data. So it's, it's really simple. All of the non-passers have this format. This is why I can combine them very easy because they all follow the same, uh, the same type. So, yeah, macros are hard, right? Yeah, not so much. This is a parser that will uh, recognize uh, alphabetic characters that terminated by digit characters and will return the alpha cards, the alpha cards. So, and this will make a function that takes uh, byte slice as input and returns a byte slice. So it's quite easy to write. When you expand that, the macro generates a function that takes, as I said, byte slice as, as input, byte slice as output, with the same lifetime and everything. So like, I only get slice of the, the input data. I don't copy anything. Zero copy parsing, yeah, fast. And basically, it's just a big list of pattern matching. So it, it, it's not so bad, right? Well, in the, actually, it's look, it looks not like that. But it's not that bad uh, as well. It just needs to be a bit more, um, should I say, explicit in the way it, uh, it does the, the pattern matching. Lots of interesting features. So it works on byte slice, it works on strings, on bit streams. So like you have a format that works like on an uh, uneven, uh, uh, unaligned size of uh, a bit. Like uh, someone asked uh, a few weeks ago, I want to pass a list of 11 bit integers. Yeah, Bitcoin. Uh, okay, and you have the combinators. So like there was uh, just before terminated, pass the first thing, pass the second, re return the results for the first. And there are lots of different combinators, like many will try to apply, apply again and again and again and return a vector of uh, the, the results. Pair will generate a tuple with first result, f second result. Peak will, will, take, uh, will apply a passer on the input, see if it works correctly, but will not consume anything. Just takes a look at the data and say, okay, it's all right, it's what I recognize. Uh, I use the regex crate, so you can put regex <coughs> in some parsers, and yeah, there's some pretty cool error management stuff. So like, uh, I don't make up, but here, uh, basically, there was this input, which from, is from an MP4 file, and uh, I got some main of uh, parser, and I see which one was applied on which part of the input. So this is something you can do in NOM, and it's really, really usable. Uh, it works on all Rust versions. No syntax extension, no, no impulse trait. I would have really liked to have impulse trait uh, when I started GNOME, but it was, I don't know, Rust 0 0.89. It was very, very old. Uh, there's no STD. It can work on par with C parsers. Like, if you want, you can micro-optimize your parser, and it will still be safe, and it can be as fast as C parsers. It's really, really interesting to do that. It works with streaming, and as I say, it's just function. You can write your own. It's very easy. Now, I'm doing NOM 2.0. I'm breaking a lot of stuff, and I'm adding a lot of features. White space parsing. So you, can, you just wrap with WS macro, and it will interspace space passers between everything. So this is for uh, JSON parsers. So it will try to pass a space, then a string, then a space, then a tag, then a space, then a value, then a space. And you don't have to write space everywhere because it was very, very annoying to do. So now it's automatic with that. Uh, there's a permutation parser. So you have a, a list of parsers and you can apply them in any order uh, as long as uh, all of the results are there. And it will return the results in the order you specified them. So it's really, really cool to use for some formats like PNG. And uh, you have just a new syntax for those who use GNOME before. There's the chain stuff, which is very ugly to apply parsers in sequence. So I have do parse, which can apply parser, take the result of parser and store it in variable that's usable elsewhere and that you can even return. So here we recognize 
uh, the 42 integer, and then we take the, the length, which is in another, another byte, and we take that many bytes and we return those bytes. It's a very common pattern in binary formats to have a tag that you recognize and then the length and then how many bytes you have to take. And after that, a few things. We have custom input types, so no more byte slice or string limits. You can do that on anything else, and like you can work with ROPs, where you have a structure that has a contiguous buffer abstraction, but is, is really a lot of different buffers. So none can work, so work with that, and we can do some pretty vector stuff with this. And that's it. No, uh, yeah, caseless, case independent parsing, and big, big uh, performance gain for some parsers because I simplified your management if you don't need to do all of the interesting stuff where you want to know ex exactly which parser got to which part of the input. Most people don't really need that, so I got a really simple way to, to get faster parser. So let's get back to the meat of the problem, VLC. So uh, do you know how a media player works? Basically, there's a common pattern of a pipe you have the access, you get a file, you open the file, or you open a network feed. You pass through the demuxer, the demuxers are the parsers, and you send, you get multiple streams, like an audio stream, a video stream, a, a subtitle, or anything else, and you send them to decoders. The decoders will generate data that can be filtered, like uh, you can have post-processing uh, stuff on the video, um, grayscale, or even scaling, exactly, that kind of thing. Then you send them to the output of your machine or you re-encode and you can max the stream back to another file or another network uh, feed and you can send, them, send that back. And most media players work like this with just a pipe of stuff. And the, the hard thing in that is synchronizing everything. Like you have the audio and the video and the subtitle stream and they all go at the same time but they don't decode <coughs> as fast like it's faster to decode audio than video. And in the end, you have to get everything at the same time uh, when you present to the user. Sometimes we get that right, sometimes we don't. So the way VLC is made is you have applications like VLC, VLMC, which is a video uh, editing software. Um, they call into libvlc, which is a nice usable interface to build media players. And libvlc core is the manager which does everything like load modules, provide uh, IO access, synchronizing everything, etc. And all of the modules are linked to libvlc core for common uh, features. They're all uh, DLL, like libvlc, libvlc core, and all of the VLC modules, they're all dynamic libraries. And the modules link to libvlc core for the features and libvlc core loads all of the library to see how they work. So it seems to make a module in Rust, we'll have to do like a bit of dance with the, the way DLLs are, are loaded. A module, so is the dynamic library loaded by VLC core. Uh, they have to expose three functions because like VLC core would just try to load the library, take that function, call it. It, it exposed some metadata on the, on the, the module and then knows what the module can do. So the plan, the plan to start parsing stuff with Rust in VLC is to make uh, a DLL in Rust that acts, acts just like a CDLL. You can load directly in the program that you can build with cargo and that will work just like a C module in VLC. So take the headers, reproduce the stuff we need, link to libvlc core, get the functions we need, reproduce the module stuff, start writing a parser, because that's kind of why I'm here, and uh, well, start parsing stuff. Uh, so VLC is written in C. With uh, the VLC command members is kind of uh, macro stuff in C. We we'll always come back to macros, I think. Um, and this kind of object-like interface in VLC where uh, there's a common inheritance stuff. So VLC common members, see, see that like, I inherit some uh, attributes from uh, the VLC object. Uh, 
lots of things that have, can be a bit hard to represent, like the, the union types and nested structures and everything. So the first thing you have to do is to try to write that in Rust. Uh, so um, if you were at Rust once when I was talking about that, I said bind gen just failed on the VLC headers. Uh, since then, I, I tried with servo bind gen and it's able to handle the VLC headers. So I sh I'll soon be able to generate the whole bindings like that with bind gen. Uh, it should be a lot, lot easier to do. But in the meantime, I wrote those by hand. Basically, you, you, you make uh, Rust struct that kind of acts like C struct with pointers everywhere. And you try to make that a bit safer. So you import functions, like this one, to take a stream and get a buffer of a specific size. You wrap those in functions that you can use from Rust correctly. You want, when you try to do FFI, you want to isolate all of the unsafe parts because you don't want to sprinkle unsafe everywhere in your code. So a bit of work to get the FFI running, like all of the structures I need. It was like a stream T reference, another struct with a reference, another thing. Like uh, you saw in there that if I want to have the VLC object T, I need to have, uh, no, no, if I want to have the DMAX T, I need to have the lib VLC and T, the VLC object T, etc. So lots of preliminary work. And then we can start writing our module. We have the interface, we can import code. And this is how uh, you declare a module in VLC. Uh, again, it's a macro. Uh, to say, OK, this is the name of uh, my module. This is what it can do. It can take an input stuff, and it can parse it. And uh, here are two functions, open and close, that you can use to, to interact with that module. And Leave VLC code just takes that and uh, loads the module afterwards, knows what do, do, to do with that module. So when you expand that, it's got some C code that's a bit annoying to write. So yeah, it's basically, it's, it's just writing code. Let's just write that in Rust. It's, it's easy to, to write. It's very, very easy to read, right? Uh, <laughs> no, well. Macro that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a common theme there that I, I really like macros. I, I really can help it. But in that case, it's, it's really useful to do. Uh, so as you see, I declare the function VLC entry, like the, the, the way it's done in C. You have the VLC entry uh, function uh, there. OK. Um, so this is how uh, the, VLC, the v VLC module will be loaded. And from there, OK, you can start passing stuff. Flash video. It's a format that's very simple. Like, it took me like less than two hours to write most of the format. Uh, it got audio, video, a few codecs that are mostly outdated. And um, here's the beginning of the format. Like, you have F, L, and V, the, the, the ASCII chars at the beginning, then a version number then some flags to indicate if you have audio, video, and an offset that indicates when the video and audio streams start uh, in the file. It's, it's interesting because like, you can have the headers, and like, you, the offset points to verify in the file, and you can like, hide some stuff between the header and the data. Uh, there has been some very, very funny stuff done, done like that. Um, so uh, yeah, I said uh, earlier, OK, there was chain in uh, num1. Now we have do pass, which is a bit easier to use. So VLC, when it gets a file, it will try to call your open method in your demuxer and say, OK, I have some data. Tell me uh, if you can pass that. So the first thing is you do a stream peek. You get, OK, I need nine bytes from the beginning of the, the data. And I will tell you if it's something I can pass. And then I, ca I, ca I call on that slice the header function that we just designed here. And if it passes correctly, it returns a header. And we can say uh, to the file, OK, now I know I'm, I, can be, I can pass that, that stuff. And we do a stream seek to go to the offset we want. So it's very easy to interact with VLC like that. 
And so since we know we can be the demuxer for that, we pass uh, the demux and control uh, functions to, to VLC to say, okay, these, those are the callbacks you need to use. So call me again and again and again until uh, I, I've passed all the data. So when you reach that offset, most of the video formats, they have multiple streams in multiple blocks. Like we'll have one block of audio, one block of video, one block of subtitles, etc. That will be interspersed depending on how the, the encoder did the stuff. Like uh, there's something for MP4 files where uh, at, if you took a look at the, the way people were writing them at the beginning, they, they put just at the end of the file the header you need to, to see, so you had to go to the end of the stream to do anything. And now they saw that you can mess with the spec and put that header just at the beginning of the file and it will not annoy anybody. And so, uh, lots of very weird stuff in uh, video format, like everybody has good ideas about how uh, a video format should be and they're all wrong, basically. <laughs> like, yeah, I can't criticize anything, but like if I design my own, I, I do some something shitty as well, so, yeah. Uh, something interesting there, uh, I create a structure in C, I mean in Rust, and I put it in a box, and I'll be given back that structure when, uh, when I'm called afterwards. Because I, I, I kind of want to, to store some data for my demuxer, and uh, this is the way I can interact with VLC. So, when I get to the first block, I decode a tag that say, okay, it's audio, it's video, or script. And I have the size of the data and a few things like the timestamp indicates when I need to present that part of the data. So if, if, if it's audio, it's at uh, second one, and it's, if it's audio, it's at second one. I know I have to present both of them at the same time. Okay, so I declare my demux function, which is kind of the way you, you would do it in C. I read my header, so it's 15 bytes. If I have four bytes, I know it's uh, the, the end of the stream because I have just a, uh, a beginning saying the, 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 the tag type and the size. And then I will try to pass everything. So this is how uh, audio header works. Like, so you would have, the, the, in the tag, you have first the type, then the, the data size and everything, and then you have the, the, the format specific data. For the audio header, it's one byte and says the kind of uh, codec you have, the size and everything. So, bitstream passing in num. You can take your input, which is byte slice, you apply bits, which transforms that to a byte slice and an index, and you go through that thing. So, here you take, you take four bits, and it gives you an integer that you can use to see which kind of uh, audio codec is it, it is. And then you use that, so you, you, do, you take one byte with stream read, and then you pass, and then you, you, have, you have enough data to know, okay, you have this, this block of data size minus the header one that contains audio data that I can put, pu pu push to VLC. So the interesting thing in there is Rust never owns the data. Like, I can ask, VLC for some data, but I don't manage its lifetime. I'm not the one allocating, I'm not the one deallocating, I'm just borrowing data from C and trying to not break stuff. It's very important because like most of the time when you interact with C code, the C code thinks it knows better. And I don't agree with that, but we have to play nice, so. And uh, don't worry about the, the unsafe stuff, it's because um, the, there are some functions that take uh, VA list, VR args, uh, stuff, and uh, we had to mess a bit with how functions were declared in, uh, in Rust. But the, so this is really simple because like the, in that parser, I only read at the headers. I take the file header, or I, I jump to the next block, I get the, the block header, which is like uh, 10 bytes if it's uh, audio, and then I say, okay, there's this much data you can use, and I'll be called again with the next block. So I never read much data with, uh, with norm in this. So it's, it's quite, quite fast. So 
don't take my word for it. I will show that it works. <laughs> okay? So, I really like that GIF. <laughs> okay, so if maybe I'll be able to put that. Oh, yeah, uh, just. <laughs> if I get it. The, the thing is, the more you see that GIF, the, the more it's funny. <laughs> okay, okay, stop. <laughs> really? Uh, so yeah, I will just build and launch and run and copy that in a, in a VLC installation. And I get, it's a very old uh, advertisement for Zelda in FLV. And you see that it's decoded with the Rust plugin there. Yeah, the graphics are pretty outdated. So, yeah. <laughs> this is Rust, this is Rust in VLC. Yeah. Like, so it, it's really interesting because like, I've been spending, okay, I moved this, I moved this stuff, but, so stop that, stop watching the GIFs. Uh, but spend so much time trying to pass stuff and trying to work, to, to talk to C and everything, and, and then it works in VLC. The first time you, you get the video to launch is such a good feeling, really. But uh, yeah, now I have to integrate that really in VLC because it was just a, a, pl a plugin that I built separately and that copied just in a VLC installation. So now the build system. Oh, can we build something with other tools? Because Cargo thinks it knows better how to build everything. And I think it's right. But the other tools know better. And you have to play nice again. So how does it work? First, you have to check if you have, there's a cargo under C. So this is autoconf stuff. It's pretty nice. To, I did not write that. I'm really bad, bad with the auto tools, but it's all right. Uh, and then the idea is that you don't build the, link, the dynamic library yourself. You build an object file, the Rust plugin.o, because there's also a tool which knows better than you how to build a dynamic library. Like, Cargo knows how to build library for uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, and don't care, it, it works, but play nice with the build system, play nice with C, play nice with the interface, play nice with the FFI. And it's annoying, but like, Rust makes it kind of easy to do. So I'm really happy with that. And on this, so, yeah, the build system is the, the biggest issue. The unsafe APIs, you can walk around them and then get really nice code to use when you do FFI. The parser is the easiest part, and like it does not really need to be fast because like video decoding is so much slower than parsing that you really don't care about that. And remember that you you have to be a nice citizen. You you're not on your land. You're using someone else's data, so you have to be nice with the way the C handles it. So from now, a few things I have to do. I have to see how to seek in a file, like move back and forth and everything. I have to put it back in the VLC repository. Uh, I can build it now inside the VLC, so it's quite cool. Uh, Predominant dependency will be something that's really interesting because uh, with um, VLC, we have this big archive with all of the libraries we need. And so for Rust, I'd like to have that as well. And uh, then the, to get complete the imports, I have to play it again a bit with BindGen. And we'll be able to replace some plugins, some VLC plugins with Rust. And uh, like, you can do that with any C project. It's easy to replace a C project file by file. Well, easy. For different reasons, uh, different uh, definitions of easy, but <laughs> it's doable. It's really doable. So, a uh, few people that helped me, uh, Guillaume Gomez, maybe you talked a bit with him about documentation. Uh, Luca Barbato, who works at LibAV, uh, here on the LibAV project, and they really helped me making this. So, Thank you. Uh, that's everything you need. If you want to make your own module, uh, here's the library. I extracted it from the project, and if you want to see the module, is there. Play with Rust. Play with C. Deploy C in production. It's cool. Uh, de de sorry, de deploy Rust in production. <laughs> de no, do, not, do not deploy C in production, please. <laughs> because then I have to break it. OK, thank you.